Hello everyone and welcome back to J1 Aviation. So let's fly a lap in the pattern and we'll talk about airspeed in the traffic pattern. Now there's a lot to cover and it'll go quick. So first and foremost, during your pre-flight, you're gonna to wanna to verify the pitot tube and static ports are clear so you'll actually have airspeed indications for your flight. Now, as we line up with the runway <clears throat> and as we push the power forward and start accelerating, our eyes will mainly be outside, but we want to glance at the airspeed indicator occasionally to confirm the airspeed indicator is starting to measure speed. This is confirmation that the pitot static system is available. So as I'm accelerating, I wanna have a point on the runway to measure this acceleration. Now we'll talk about that a little bit more when we're on downwind and we have some time. So we'll rotate at 55 for this Cherokee, which means we'll apply a little bit of back pressure on the yoke. As we come off the ground, we'll let the aircraft accelerate to our first climb speed of VX, which is known as the best angle of climb. So we'll climb at this speed until all obstacles are passed. So what this climb speed does is it gives us the greatest altitude gain over a given distance. So our object here is to climb away from the ground and get as much altitude in the least amount of distance traveled over the ground. So this will help us keep clear of any obstacles and rising terrain. So once all obstacles are passed, either imaginary or real, we'll raise the flaps and lower the pitch attitude to our next climb speed, which is VY. So these two actions will allow the airspeed to increase. So what we are targeting for VY is to gain the most altitude over a given time frame. Now to achieve these climb speeds, whether VX or VY, there's no need to be constantly you know, staring at the airspeed indicator. So you'll learn with your seat height where the horizon crosses the windshield at either VX or VY. So you'll want to fly one of those airspeeds. You just pitch for the angle you're looking for and the result of that will be the airspeed that you were targeting based on your pitch altitude. So when we are within 300 feet of traffic pattern altitude, We'll visually confirm the crosswind leg is clear of traffic and then we'll turn crosswind. So we'll continue at VY all the way up to traffic pattern altitude, which is a thousand feet AGL for this airport. So when we're at an appropriate distance from the runway, we'll clear downwind. We'll make sure there isn't any traffic here and then we'll turn onto the downwind leg. So once we reach traffic pattern altitude, we'll push the nose forward to a level pitch attitude, let the plane accelerate to our recommended speed on downwind and then throttle back to an appropriate power setting. So I'll reduce the RPM here to about 2000, which should give us around 100 miles per hour. So after making these pitch and power adjustments, we can retrim the aircraft to relieve any pressure that we have on the control yoke. Now on downwind, again, we want our eyes to be outside, right? You want to understand the sight picture, again, for level flight, just as you do with climb. Generally, that's like putting one fist on the nose of the aircraft and you have one fist between the dashboard of the aircraft and the horizon. So on downwind, we want the speed to be stable. A stable speed and stable altitude will put us in a good position for a good approach and landing. So while we are cruising here on downwind, um, let's go back to something on takeoff that we didn't have time to discuss because things happen so quick on takeoff. So the point here is that we want a way to measure our acceleration, right? So you can be sure the engine is making the appropriate power. So before you start to take off, you want to have a point identified near the runway, which is your checkpoint. Now this is called the 50-70 rule. At, for, so for this rule, you need 70% of your takeoff speed by 50% of the runway. And if we can go with that and meet that, then our acceleration is on track. Now keep in mind the length of the runway here as well, right? If you're departing from a 10,000 foot runway, I hope you have more than 70% of your speed by 5,000 feet down the runway. So that you know that what, you need to know what that 70% is and then the location on the runway you want to abort the takeoff if you haven't reached your expected speed. Now once we are a beam the numbers or our point of landing, we will throttle back a few hundred RPM, let the plane start to slow down to around 90 miles per hour. We're going to establish around a 500 foot per minute descent. We'll confirm the airspeed is in the white arc. We'll add our first notch of flaps. We'll continue until we see the runway is a 45 degree behind us. When it is, that's our indication to make our turn to the base leg. We'll look for traffic, make sure it's clear, and then we'll make that turn. So once we are established on the base leg, the airplane flying handbook recommends to fly this leg at 1.4 VSO. That would be 77 in this Cherokee, and we'll just use 80. So as we are slowing to 80, we'll add our second notch of flaps. As I'm here on the base leg, I'm checking final. I'm making sure I don't see anyone on a straight in final that I may have missed on the radio or in case they weren't even talking on the radio. Now this turn to final 
is the most dangerous turn in the traffic pattern. We're low, we're slow, and we want to avoid steep, uncoordinated turns here. So we'll start the turn at a pace which allows us to make a more gentle turn and allow us to roll out on final squarely, ideally without overshooting or undershooting final approach. So then once we're on final approach, I'll lower the last notch of flaps. Now that we're on final approach and the big turns are passed, we want a stabilized approach. Basically what this means is we have generally constant speed and a glide path towards the runway. We aren't making any large corrections. If that becomes necessary, we could always go around. So on final approach, we want to slow to around 75. We use small pitch and power adjustments as necessary to continue our track towards the aiming point on the runway. As we come over the airport fence, we'll continue to slow down to around 70 until we are on short final. Power can come to idle as the field is made, or some situations might call for a little touch of power upon landing. As we continue to descend, we'll come into ground effect. The airspeed will continue to bleed off and we'll touch down. So after we touch down, we want to use aerodynamic braking to save wear and tear on the brakes as much as possible. We'll hold the yoke back to accomplish that. So when the aircraft slows to a safe speed, then we can exit the runway. So there you go, one lap around the traffic pattern with the focus being on airspeed. Thanks everyone for watching today. We'll hope you join us on a future flight and thanks for flying J1 Aviation.